Hi and welcome to National Harbor near Washington DC for CR Space 2016. Navy Recognition is delighted to bring you daily video coverage of the largest maritime exposition in the United States. One of the burning topics this year is distributed lethality. It's on everyone's mouth. The concept was introduced by Vice Admiral Roden, the US Navy commander of the surface fleet. It basically consists in fitting more weapons and sensors across virtually the entire surface fleet, including amphibious ships such as LPDs or even fleet tankers and auxiliary vessels. The US Navy believes this is the right answer to anti-access error denial strategies emerging out of countries like China. So for our day one video coverage from the CR Space 2016 show floor, we're focusing on distributed lethality effectors and sensors. We, uh, this is just the nose cone of the Tomahawk Block 4 missile, the current missile that's in production. Uh, Tomahawk has a long history since about 1982 time frame. We've gone through four modifications and the latest version is the Block 4. But what we're looking at from a distributed lethality standpoint is expanding the mission set for Tomahawk. Uh, along those lines, in uh, last uh, January, January of 2015, we completed a test uh, against a moving target, and that was essentially to show how well we could accurately target a moving ship uh, and get that information to the weapon. Tomahawk has a dual uh, uh, bidirectional data link. Uh, and it, we take advantage of that and, and, and talk the weapon into a seeker basket. In fact, in the test, we actually in, in, uh, intercepted the target and had a, a hit on a moving ship target. So the plan in, in 2017 is to begin work on a uh, probably a tri-mode seeker, although the Navy's still deciding exactly which modes we want. Uh, we at Raytheon have invested a lot of uh, money in uh, uh, mostly in the RF spectrum because we already have a lot of high TRL or high technology readiness level uh, uh, technology in the uh, IR spectrum. So adding to that the RF, both passive and active, uh, is what we're planning to add to the weapon. So we see that as adding additional missions to the weapon. So today, you know, it's the world's best long-range precision strike weapon out to uh, beyond a thousand miles. Uh, and tomorrow it'll be able to not only get, go against fixed targets, but also moving targets on land and at sea. This is the NSM missile that is developed by Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace as the most precise anti-shipping missile that's available on the market today. It's a fifth generation missile that takes advantage of low observable technologies and autonomous target recognition and identification. NSM as a distributed lethality effector is important because it can be deployed on the smaller surface combatants in the Navy. Depicted in this model is a representation of NSM that would be installed in the Freedom Class LCS. The key feature of NSM is the fact that it's able to identify its targets by ship class in congested, contested environments and attack only that class of ship. We have the Mark 45 five inch naval gun uh, we are developing the hypervelocity projectile that will be integrated with Mark 45. And this will expand the mission set beyond surface to surface to anti-air, cruise missile defense, and future missions such as ballistic missile defense. All in a very compact uh, projectile that is illustrated here. With Mark 45 being on every destroyer and cruiser with the U.S. Navy, that is a, certainly a, a platform that can support distributed lethality with the introduction of the hypervelocity projectile. Lorasm is a JASM-ER derivative uh, that DARPA and the ONR paid Lockheed to develop uh, to hit ships with a stealthy land attack weapon. Designed in the late 80s to survive any air defense environment, uh, we've upgraded the weapon with data links and advanced sensors to operate in a GPS and communications denied environment.
Uh, right now I have a 3D printed model of uh, Lorazim in a surface launch configuration. Uh, this configuration was specifically designed to work off of all Navy surface ships to support distributed lethality. So this spit fits in the same space, weight, and power as Harpoon does. So a lot of the ships in the Navy don't have Mark 41, so this would enable Admiral Roden and the surface fleet to distribute this weapon across multiple different platforms. Uh, key capabilities, uh, it's an in-production weapon already with the Air Force, so it's uh, very affordable. Uh, it has the range to outstick enemy threats for the foreseeable future. This is a Harpoon. The Harpoon ER is the same form factor weapon as the existing Harpoon. Uh, what we're able to do is leverage off of Harpoon technologies and the advanced capabilities we're putting in and double the range of the existing Harpoon. We retain the all-weather seeker capability that's currently in Harpoon. We've enlarged the fuel tank and gone to an advanced warhead so we get more fuel in the weapon and then also a more fuel efficient engine. And that all fits within the existing form factor of the Harpoon today. But we're looking, right now we're putting Harpoon on the USS Coronado on LCS-4 for deployment later this year, and we have designs to put it on LCS-1, both configurations of the LCS. Advanced Acoustic Concepts is a joint venture that's owned by both DRS and Talus. Um, we, uh, we have our own legacy programs, but we also uh, are working on bringing mature Talus technology into the U.S. market. Uh, along with that, we would, we would move the manufacturing over here to the United States. So the, this variable depth sonar that you see here is um, really the, the first case where the U.S. Navy has expressed interest in, in a mature sonar system. Uh, they bought one advanced development model, or ADM, and they're evaluating uh, through a, a program for LCS, buying several more for, for that program. We originally thought of this concept to help reduce the, the space weight and power that's going to be consumed by the um, AMDR radar that's going on the Flight 3 of DDG-51. Um, but the more we looked at it, uh, the more we realized that it really can increase the capability for that ship to um, detect submarines. Uh, we also think it might change the way that the Navy operates their ships uh, in reference to their uh, submarine search patterns. If the, if the DDG-51s have a, a sonar that can get below the acoustic layer, um, they, they can search out farther uh, and, and, and probably offer more protection to the high value units. If you think about um, having more transmitters out there in the fleet, so maybe not even on just DDG-51 or LCS, but there might be some other platforms where you can uh, install this transmitter, then you can really start working what we call uh, multi-static uh, anti-submarine warfare. Uh, where you have transmitters and receivers in different locations, and it really increases the coverage area that, that, that you're able to um, search in. That's it for today, but make sure to join us tomorrow for day two at Sierra Space 2016. We'll be focusing on platforms.